spoken on this subject during my sermons delivered during Ramadan. And uh, it was, it took me one hour at least to, to explain this issue. And not only once, many a time during many Ramadan, I have explained the issue with reference to other angles of the same question. So it will be impossible for me to deal with this question now and here. But I would again request the questioner to have access to our uh, department here, yes, audio, video audio video department, and they will lead the questioner to such audios and videos which contain the answer to this question. But one thing I must tell you, the doors are held, are not closed for everyone. Because the hellish practices go on during the month of Ramadan, even in the Muslim world. So this concept of physically shutting the doors is absolutely wrong and it does not emerge from the uh, finding, uh, from the sayings of the Holy Prophet and the practice of the Holy Prophet of Islam. The next question is from uh, Mrs. Uh, Masuda Bidasi herself. She asks, is there any mention in the Holy Quran or the Hadith to say that the Holy Prophet وسلم, his miraj or journey to heaven was in soul only or was it soul and body? She says, <coughs> Yes, I understood the question and I have understood it very clearly because this question is Address been addressed to me, or this question has been asked of me so many times before. The physical mirage cannot take place. The material mirage is impossible to have taken place because, according to the Holy Quran, God was with him where Prophet Muhammad was. And he himself took him to some destination. So was he going to see God at the end of the journey while the God was him all the time? So it positively shows that the chronic treatment of the subject is metaphorical. And his body could not have moved in the direction of a spirit which surrounded him. According to the Holy Quran, God is all around us, above and below and right and left and front and back. Whichever way we turn, we see God. So in which direction should he have flown? Whichever direct, physical direction he had taken, he was moving away from the rest of God. And moving in the direction of one point in God while abandoning all the God which surrounded him. So this concept is so naive that when you understand its naivety you, 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 you know positively that it's not just naive, it's extremely stupid. It cannot happen. So the physical ascent of the Holy Prophet is only a matter of uh, the unfortunate ignorant mullahs and messes who do not know the nature of God at all, who don't, do not pay attention to the verses of the Holy Quran which refer to this ascent. Now in the end, to be very brief, I will quote just one verse and invite the attention of the questioner to the message of that verse. The Holy Quran in the same story of the ascent of the Holy Prophet says, Ma kadabal fawadu mara The heart or the mind did not tell lies about what the mind saw. 
not the Sai eyes, but the mental image, the image of the heart, the, the faculty of heart and mind. They saw something which means a vision, not the physical sighting of God, but the vision of humans can uh, imagine any anything. But what the Holy Prophet imagined was not wrong. That was true. Because in that journey, the so-called physical journey, which we believe was spiritual, many things were prophesied which came to be true. So with the unfolding of subsequent events, this uh, verdict of the Quran is proved right. That whatever his mind saw, the eyes of his heart saw, was correct. Because what he saw and related in relation to the future of Islam was uh, proved true by the future events. So this is in nutshell the answer, the, the substance of the answer which I have been given, giving before, but more detailed answers with reference to many other verses have also been given and I hope the person will have access to these cassettes. Yes, please. This question is from uh, Nusrat Kalashi, I think, who is an Ahmadi from Kosovo. Kosovo, yes, I know, yes. Please. Why do non-Ahmadi Muslims not accept Ahmadis as Muslim? We never say that non-Ahmadi Muslims are non-Muslims. We never say that. Why do non Ahmadis call us non Muslim? The opposite. Yes. Well, you should ask them. <laughs> as far as I am concerned, I have made it very clear that we never refer to the non Ahmadi Muslims as non Muslims. Our terminology is very clear. We always say they are non Ahmadi Muslims and also they are non-Muslims. So we do not attribute to them any claim which do no, they do not possess. We are absolutely right and rational in our attitude. But at the same time we believe that the concept of Islam which guides their path here in this world is erroneous. So they cannot be genuinely be referred to be Muslims in the sight of God. Because if you are a genuine Muslim, then you should not differ from each other. And you should remain united. So this is in nutshell my answer to this question, if it were addressed to me. But you should address this question to non muslims Why do they refer to us as non-Muslims? We profess to be Muslims. We claim to be Muslims. And this fundamental human right must be permitted to be shared by Ahmadis. It's fundamental human right. Particularly in the light of the conduct of the Holy Prophet of Islam, which is also mentioned in the Holy Quran. It never happened in the lifetime of the Holy Prophet that he addressed someone who claimed to be Muslim as non-Muslim. Never once. Despite the fact that Allah had told him that these so-called Muslims are not Muslims in reality. They have no faith. This Despite this knowledge bestowed upon him by God himself, he was not authorized by God to address them as non-Muslim as long as they address themselves to be Muslims. So the profession of a faith is the fundamental human right.